Okay, so now this is getting a bit more abstract. We have a position time graph and we're asked to analyze the motion of the cheetah from its graphical representation. Hmm. Well, a good idea is to backtrack and to think what we did to get here to begin with. So one way to do this is to think of the origin as the tree. And from the tree, we had our grassland all along it. So the tree is going to act like the origin and anything to the right of the tree, which in this case looks upwards, is going to be positive. And anything to the left of the tree, which in this case looks downwards, will be negative. Notice that in the red section of our graph, it starts from the origin, which is the tree, and it moves in the positive values. So we can represent this in our diagram as moving away from the tree to the right. And then during the pink line, it begins to go back towards the tree, hits the tree, and keeps on going. Let's represent this. So in the pink line, then it begins to change its direction towards the tree, and it goes past the tree. Well, in this turning of direction, notice that the values to stop increasing. So a 2.5 was the maximum, then it started to decrease. So we call this a turning point. And the other point of interest is when it crossed the axis in this position time graph. So this crossed the origin which is the tree right so this is very good because when we're talking about motion we want to describe its type of motion direction of motion so in the first section it moves to the right then the second section it moves to the left then we want to identify with what type of motion given that these two are linear graphs then it's going to be uniform motion but we could do better than that we can represent which one is moving faster than the other. So notice if we're looking at the red graph, in two seconds of time, the cheetah covers about 2.5 meters. So if we were to take the slope, in other words, so slope of red line equals, well, the rise was 2.5 meters difference and the run, which was the change in time, was two seconds. So we have 2.5 over two meters per second. And we can call the slope of the red line V1. So V1. And we can calculate the slope of the pink line. To make it more clear, I'm gonna use pink as well for the highlighter. So notice that in two seconds of time, for the same time comparison, how much distance was covered in that time? Roughly, let's see, 1.5 meters. So the slope of the pink line. So in this case, it decreased by 1.5 meters in two seconds. So the slope is negative 1.5 over two meters per second. And we, let's call this V2. So now we have a situation where we have comparison 2.5 over 2 and 1.5 over 2. 2.5 over 2 is greater than 1.5 over 2. So what does this mean? V1 is greater than V2. So V1 is faster than V2. But we can do better than this because we also notice that for V1, it was a positive number, and V2 is a negative number. What does that indicate? Well, if we go back to where we started, for V1, the motion was to the right, which was positive. And for V2, the motion was to the left, which we call negative. So the sign of the velocity tells you the direction of motion. So let's make a note of this. So the sign of the velocity gives a direction of motion. Uh, we can further organize all of what we've been covering into one nice table, which I like to call the slope legend. 
so let's look at the graph and if in our graph the line slants to the right or slants to the left we want to categorize what type of motion it's going to be here so sign of slope so if it slants to the right we say the sign of the slope is positive and if it slants to the left we say it's negative and now we can connect it with the direction of motion so if it's a positive slope which means a positive ve velocity in this case it moves to the right and if it's negative it moves to the left so this is very good to make a note of and this is when we're talking about position time graphs so let's go back and see if it makes sense right because v1 was positive it moves to the right v2 is negative it was moving to the left so that makes sense and you just compare the steepness to determine which moves faster so v1 moves faster than v2 because the slope was greater than so that's it for now and i'm going to show you the next type of motion so stay tuned mm -hmm.